I'm here at Judmont and I'm joined by Shane to talk about a recent trip we had with some Australians out here. Shane, tell me about that. Oh, it was really exciting to see them. I mean, you know, on the back of a, a very busy Northern Hemisphere season, which is now wound up, and then to see so many people interested in your stallions coming up from the Southern Hemisphere, I mean, you know, that hasn't happened before. Um, it's very significant and we're very grateful for them. And you mentioned there has been some interest in the Southern Hemisphere. Tell us about the interest in Frank Cool and Kingman, especially. Yeah, there are two big stallions. Um, obviously, with Kingman being a son of Invincible Spirit, um, the sire of I Am Invincible, there's obviously, you know, that connection. And, you know, he was a brilliant miler, um, low to speed, very good turn of foot. And, uh, you know, he's proved a success up here. So there is no reason to think why he couldn't work in Australia. And obviously those fans of Vinny um, will obviously be you know, keen to support him and, and, and have done some big, big numbers in recent mm. seasons. Um, Frankl, of course, is, you know, he, he's, a, he's mm. a, a worldwide brand in his own right. Um, everyone knows him when he went to Stug because he was you know, the highest rated racehorse of all time. He's been those rare commodities that's also been a hugely successful stallion. Um, and not just up here, but also in, in Australia and in Japan and elsewhere around the world. Um, amazingly, his, his stats are as good in Australia as they are in mm. Europe, and that's extremely rare. And he's a gorgeous looking horse. We saw him come out and parade and the crowd were just taken aback by him. Yeah. Tell me, um, obviously we have champion three-year-old in Australia in Hungry Heart. Um, we've talked about the interest. How do you foresee that interest over the next few years for both Frankel and Kingman? Uh, well, hopefully it'll uh, continue for quite some time. Um, the horse is just going from strength to strength. Um, you know, I mean, obviously Hungry Heart kind of got mm. the ball rolling from him, and then the mm. two-year-old converged. That was this very significant win, getting mm. the Group 1 winner over uh, as a two-year-old. Um, Mirage Dancers also won a Group 1 down there. Um, yeah, it just, it just caught people's attention, and they've very much jumped on the bandwagon. Um, he surprised us last year with the support he got and some very good br um, mares and very, very good breeders. Um, you know, people like, you know, John Camilleri, uh, Yulong, um, Newgate, uh, Coombe Australia, Godolphin Australia. Um, these are people who, uh, John Singleton, you know, he, he's had a lot of luck with the horse. Uh, been a big fan from the beginning. Um, so we're very lucky that, like any stallion, they're, they're only as good as the mares they get and the mm. support they get from these breeders. And we're, and we're talking about some of the best breeders in the world, mm. not just Australia. Mm. So, um, you know, he, he, he's very lucky that way and um, they're, they're coming back in droves. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for having me.